So this video is a follow-up to our discussion about Python classes. Remember, a class is your ability in Python to define a new type of object. We used it to define the class particle here, and we gave it all the uh, properties you would typically want a particle to have, position, velocity, mass, charge, and spin. Um, you can add other stuff to that if you need to add a color charge or uh, some additional type of momentum or some new gauge symmetry that you want to work with, something, something. Um, you know, you can have all that stuff in here. Um, but what I want to talk about today is now that we're working with these classes and functions and things like that, it gets to be tricky to keep track of what variables are defined where. And in particular, you want to think about which variables are defined globally and which variables are defined locally. For example, suppose I wanted to take this particle and calculate what's called its rest energy. It's energy in terms of E equals MC squared. Um, a logical way to do that would be to define a new function, call it rest energy, just like we did for linear momentum here. Um, and I can just return self.mass times speed of light squared. Now, in order to do that, of course, I'm going to need to define this thing called the speed of light. Um, a simple way to do that is going to be to define it here. So speed of light equals 3 times 10 to the 8. Um, and here I can reference this. Uh, it'll know what speed of light is and it'll return for me the correct answer. But that seems a bit short-sighted because this assumes that this function is the only place where I'm going to be referencing speed of light. Because since I've defined speed of light here within this function rest energy, the code is only going to know what speed of light is here within rest energy. Let me show you what I mean. Um, let's give this thing a print command. Say I'm in rest energy and speed of light equals, and then we'll have it print the value for speed of light. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come down here to the end and I'm gonna have this thing print, I'm in rest energy and speed of light equals speed of light. And uh, in order to get this thing to print, of course, we're gonna call rest energy. So let's have it, let's have it print electron dot rest underscore energy. Oops, before I do that, I should change what this says here. Uh, I'm in the main code. There we go. So now we know which print statement is taking place where. Control 2 to run. So notice I get an error message. In particular, it tells me on line 44, when I'm trying to print, I'm in the main code, it tells me speed of light is not defined. Now, if you look at the print output, it was able to do this just fine in rest energy. So when we're in the rest energy function, it's able to tell me what speed of light is, three times 10 to the eight. But the problem is, because I defined speed of light inside this function, as soon as the code leaves this chunk of a function here, it's gonna forget what it had stored in speed of light. It's not going to keep that in memory anymore. It's gonna get rid of it because it's done with this function. And so when I make this call in line 44 to speed of light, it doesn't know what that value is. It doesn't remember storing it there. It's got a very compartmentalized memory. You know, if you think about um, when you can't remember where you left your keys because you set them down in the kitchen, and why would you set your keys down in the kitchen? That's silly, so you would never think of picking up your keys in the kitchen. That's exactly what's going on here, but in a very literal, unbreakable sense. Now, you might say, but I want to be able to access the speed of light later on. I mean, it's the speed of light. It comes up in a lot of calculations. There is another way to do this. And let me show you what you'd do. You would take this. We're going to cut it out of here. We're going to scroll up to the top. And we're going to paste it in here. So we're going to find the speed of light here. Now, that's only half the story because I now have to tell the code I want to make this a global variable. Global means I want this thing called speed of light to have the same value no matter where I call it. No matter what I do with it, no matter where I am, I want it to have the same value. So I take this global speed of light here, scroll down, and here in rest energy, I'm gonna put in global speed of light. So now it's gonna look back at the global list of variables that I started way up top. It's gonna to look for speed of light 
and it's going to recognize what that value is. So let's see what happens here. Control two. And notice this time I don't get an error message. You notice it knows what speed of light is here in the function rest energy, and it knows what speed of light is here in the main code. So it's generally a good idea if there's a variable or a value that you want to be able to reference repeatedly, that you want to be able to reference in the main code and then inside a class and then inside of a, a function, you want to go ahead and declare that as a global variable. Add it to your list of global variables. Um, it's safer that way and you can you, you, you don't have to keep track of as much that way. It makes it a lot easier. So that's a great addition to our tool set when working with classes and functions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.